Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another weekly design challenge where I film the process as I sketch out a jet ski this week around. So, let's get started. I want to keep this video as low speed as possible, so I kept it around four times the normal speed where I think there is stuff to learn. The early sketches and inking part I sped up to 12 times the speed. And talking about early sketches, that is what you can see now. Usually I start my sketching process by doing studies or exploring a shape. In this case, I did pull up a bunch of uh, references, but I really didn't copy them. I was just trying to see how the shapes are flowing. Here, I'm smudging, I cut, a, I cut and paste, I move around parts of the sketches. It's, it's really all about finding the right shapes and volumes. The best method most of the times for quick shape generation is definitely using a profile drawing and iterating parts of it. But I really like those three quarter views, so I will be quickly jumping back into 3D sketching pattern. Even with a 3D view, just as before, I am going to try and see what are the shapes that I like most and what are the correct volumes. I will erase and redraw a whole lot until I find the shape that I like. Since I start deviating from the previous sketches, I did also draw a side view below the three quarter view so I can check how the shapes that I am creating 3D will resonate in 2D. I find this to be a good exercise if you want to make sure your design works from several angles. Of course, I don't have the time to do a proper design, but for a two hour sketch, this should be enough. After I'm at a point with the sketch that I really like, I'm going to clean up the lines. In this case, meaning that I'm going to lower the opacity and go over them with nice, non-sketchy dark lines. This process is not that interesting, so I speed the video up and I'll come back with commentary when the rendering part starts. If you want, you can jump to minute 6.30 if you want to skip the line process.
So what I'm not showing here, but I usually do with most of my render or coloring work, is fill the lines with a color, with a solid color, usually with white, and then paint on consecutive clipping masks above the layer. I created a custom action for myself that fills in the line work on a layer below the line art layer. I have a video on that in my library called Photoshop Actions Tutorial, but I will also add a link to that video at the end of this one if you're interested. So basically I use only two brushes and one eraser here. Uh, my most used brush is the airbrush with which I can create really nice gradients and transitions, simulating where the volumes change directions. And then to control the edges of these shapes and volumes, I use a hard eraser to erase parts of the airbrushed area. You will see me create new layers and going over areas several times till I end up where I want to be. This process is usually really fun and relaxing, it just takes a while. You have to decide where your light source will be and according to that you will have to start darkening areas that are supposed to be in shadow or more or less shadow. The second brush I mentioned is a round brush with uh, pressure sensitivity that I use to make the highlights as a bit stronger and sharper if needed. But even for those I use the airbrush, I just make it small enough in size. Sometimes I cheat a bit and make parts like the edges of the seat of the jet ski more shiny to make it pop a bit more. Even if it, in reality the material might be not shiny, in a sketch like this you can get away with it. You will see me render shiny metal and glass surfaces with angles and bands alike. This is where the airbrush eraser really comes in handy and is the workhorse of a rendering, at least for me. This is also the part of the video that runs at 4 times speed instead of 12, so you can have a better understanding what exactly I'm doing here. I don't have much else to say here, so see you back at the end of the video.
These weekly design challenges can be really fun and a great inspiration as well. You can see a lot of great designers and sketchers tackling the same subject as you and you can learn a lot from them. Anyways, that was all I had to show you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned from it. Please feel free to leave me a comment or leave a question below. I look forward to improving my content based on your suggestions. If you like this video, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this. For more sketching related updates, follow me on my Instagram. Hope you have a great week and see you folks next time. Bye bye!